Hi guys, welcome back. So far in this class series, we've reviewed basic pencil techniques, lighting, and supplies. Now it's time to put you into an artist frame of mind. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips that you can use to mentally change the way you color. In addition to that, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you 10 physical tips, 10 things you can actually do and apply to your artwork that will immediately make it more appealing. So sit back and let's get started. I've got the world on top of me, weighing down so heavily. The first thing you're going to do when, when you start a new picture, set a goal. And I know this sounds silly, you just want to color or do art, but take a second and say, in this picture, I want X. Now, you don't have to make a goal that says, I want to be the greatest artist in the world. In this picture, I want to draw realistic bricks. In this picture, I want to improve my shadowing. Some short-term goal that when you're done with that picture, you can go back and say, well, I was trying to do this. Did I accomplish it? If you didn't, no big deal. Go back and do another picture. Or even better, restart that picture. Do it again. Usually the second time when you realize your mistakes and you're able to start with a clean slate, it'll come out better the second time. So these goals are very important. I know that every rah-rah speech starts with set a goal, but it's really the truth. You need a goal. Number two, concentrate on just one new skill or one new technique. This is very important, especially for beginning artists where you take a picture and you want the whole picture to come out great. And that's why I don't encourage new artists to do just pictures. Do small bits of pictures. In fact, I have one subscriber, Pat, who just wrote to me the other day and, and said, I finally get it. Practice on small objects. Yes, practice your strawberries, your blueberries, your leaves, your, your fur, blending a sphere, anything that is small, practice it because once you put all those small pictures together, when you're ready to sit down and do a big picture, that picture is going to be so much easier. And you're going to look for, well, you know, frame of reference. Well, I did really good leaves and maybe bring them out, take them out of your book and say, I like the way it came out this way. Or you can look at it and say, you know, I really don't like that type because there's so many ways of doing it, maybe I'll try something new. One new skill. 50 pictures later, you will have practiced 50 different skills. So many of you have come to me and say, oh, I watched this one and this one. And I want you to look at coloring videos or art videos with a different eye. I want you to watch technique. What do you like about a specific artist? What makes their art good? How did they achieve that picture? And I'm not talking about just the colors that they use because I can give you a list of colors. I'm talking about style. What is it that fascinates you about this person? So when you're watching these videos, I'm not saying just me, all videos, I can name you a dozen artists right now that I watch for their technique. So you might want to set a goal, one video a day, where you're just looking at that technique. You can actually turn the sound off and just watch. Because this is probably the most heartbreaking thing I hear from people. I will never be as good as you. I'm just a beginner, I can't do this. Compete, now I'm saying this again, and over and loud and clear. Perk up, this is the one, put a star, write it down, put it on your refrigerator. Compete with only yourself. Don't compete with me. I've been doing this for a long time. I went to classes to do art. I teach art. Don't expect to be me. I can, this is one of the reasons that I don't really like when people are only doing copy videos where you take a picture. I don't really like draw with me or color with me where you're taking the same pencils that I'm using and trying to figure out how to make your picture look exactly like mine. That is so boring. Even the pictures that I love. One of my commenters mentioned Chris Chang the other day and that they feel bad because they can't 
do what Chris does. Chris is an artist. Uh, Chris has been doing this a long time. She's, it's obvious. Let her inspire. Take what you are inspired by and make it your own, your own style. Your, develop your own way of doing it. Don't use somebody else's. In fact, if I was going to do the same picture as somebody else, I would be bored out of my mind. And the picture will never come out looking as good as that person because that person used their own style, their own hand pressure, their own judgment. Do your own work. And again, I'm going to say it, compete only with yourself. If today you did a smooth background and last week you didn't, You've just competed in one. I've heard from a lot of people where they don't have their old work. The best thing that you can do is keep your old work. Keep the pictures that didn't come out good because you can go back and look. Also, a lot of people try techniques that are beyond their skill level. These techniques will come in time. Boca background is an advanced pencil skill. It's not a beginning skill. Render really good glass that comes in time. Being able to see the nuances of the light and capture that properly. That's very hard. Concentrate on things that are on your level and progress through your own goals. Don't worry about what somebody else is doing. The last tip for improving your artwork in just one day, ask for a critique. Now, you don't need an artist to critique your work. Somebody who will tell you the truth works. Now, with me, I ask my dad, what do you think of a picture I'm doing? I could have drawn with my toes, with my eyes closed and one hand behind my back, my right hand. And I, <laughs> my father will tell me that is the best thing he's ever seen and he wants to hang it on his wall. Same picture, I could show it to my daughter who will not tell me it's good. She will tell me, you know, you went from a level four, I forgot what she says, it is, a grade four, and you progressed to a grade nine too quickly. There's no medium in between. Your perspective on this part is off by an eighth of an inch. She will never, ever sugarcoat it for me. That's because she's went to school for art and she's used to having critiques. There are a lot of groups out there for coloring. Go on Facebook. You'll find a thousand groups. Put your picture up and <laughs> instead of saying, this is my new picture. How do you like it? Everybody will pat you on the head and go, oh, it's beautiful. Ask the same question. Something doesn't look right and I can't figure it out. You will get 50 responses from people who will analyze your work and maybe out of the 50 responses that tell you your yellow isn't yellow enough or your orange isn't bright enough out of those maybe five of them will give you real true critique something that you can use to expand and improve change your goals improve your technique things that you could do today that will make your pictures better by tomorrow this is going to make a big impact on your artwork. My first tip, take a photo and photograph often. What you're seeing with your eyes and what the camera will pick up will make a major difference. You may not notice where your highlights are actually hitting the page. The camera will pick it up and you'll be able to adjust your artwork as the way the camera looks. Always trust the camera more than your eyes. The second one is magnify, and I'm going to do an entire video coming up like either the next one or one after that on magnification. So I'm not going to get really into this topic, but the second thing is use a magnifying glass, and then we're going to go way deeper. Okay, for every newbie out there, number three, when you think you're done, put another layer on. Doesn't matter. You are about to walk away from your picture, do another layer. You won't regret it. Number four, walk away often. I usually color for five minutes and then get up and walk away. Come back another five minutes. It refreshes your eyes. You see it differently. Works every time. Number five, a second pair of eyes. 
ask somebody from midway through your details, somebody else's eyes see something that you're not picking up on. Number six, and a lot of people don't realize this, and this makes a huge difference. Let your wax cool down. I'm going to say it again. Let your wax cool down. Did you ever notice that when you're coloring and coloring and coloring and all of a sudden it's very, very slick and you can't possibly get another layer on? You walk away, let that wax cool. It's wax. Coloring is friction. It's going to become more slick and slippery. When you let it harden and dry and cool, even if it's a couple of degrees, you'll be able to add another layer. Number seven, evaluate your picture in different light. A lot of times your pictures will look different in the morning than they do at night, depending on the light. And you'll be able to pick up a lot more that you missed in the daylight. Number eight, and I know a lot of people don't do this. The last thing that you do with your picture is a hard color, you little circles. Your picture should look slick and shiny. And that's when you know the that's when you know that your tooth is saturated and your picture comes out much nicer. So don't forget that burnishing. And if you're wondering, well, how do I do that? We're gonna have a class on burnishing. Hang in there. Number nine, spray seal your picture. When you're done, get out that spray seal and seal it. First of all, it'll take away any sort of uh, wax bloom that may have developed. And wax bloom is the separation of your pigment and your wax, where your pigment falls to the bottom of the wax and you get sort of like a white haze on your picture and it gets worse over time. If you put a spray seal on it, it takes it away immediately and it prevents it from happening in the future. And the last thing, share your work. What's the point of doing art if you don't share it with the world? With that, I will see you guys in my next class. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe because there's going to be a lot more. Take care. Mm -hmm.